Well, as you well know, most of this channel has nothing to do with doom and gloom. Sometimes we put a little bit of that stuff on here, but the doom and gloom we put out on this channel is reality. Reality check, damn it. <laughs> That's what it is. Unfortunately, it's reality. That's the problem, unfortunately. We could try to wish it away, but it's there. Uh, here's one of your best survival tips, too. Uh, I'm showing it right now. A crated up old Indian motorcycle that doesn't have any electronic crap on it. That is your survival gear in a box. You could take you, your wife, and your kid along to the hills of Tennessee or whatever the hell you need to go to and uh, escape the you know, Armageddon, whatever the hell's coming up. Uh, actually, I'm going to tell you the truth. Uh, there's a lot of things kind of coming up, but, um, you know, let me just state this. I keep I keep hearing this crap on the other channels about the elite got this all planned out and they got this thing and you know what that, nobody's got things planned out that perfect. Um, obviously, for somebody to um, have a lot of money, a lot of power, and retain the money and power, they're not stupid because there's always competition for other people to try to get in their position. Um, quite obviously, people that are on a top if you want to call it that, or the elite, quote-unquote. <clears throat> they're not stupid. They're not stupid, and they're far from lazy. They're not lethargic. They're constantly moving. Um, but as far as, like, rigid plans, yeah, maybe there's somewhat rigid plans out there, but they change. That's that's one thing I kind of have a myth get pissed off about on some of the other, you know, fear monger, yo, because you know, I don't play fear mongers. I know I've been accused of that a little bit, but... Uh, obviously, if you look at the content of my channel, it's pretty much there's a lot of positive things on there besides. But, you know, it's not fear mongery. It's reality. Sorry. Sorry. You know? That's what the hell it is. And uh, none of the stuff I even put out there as, as far as, like, um, you know, adding any bad news is designed to upset people. You know, actually, uh, I want people to just kick back and, you know, realize, you know, you could take action. Just like old girl here sitting on the Harley. Um you know, there's a dangerous world out there. Every time you get on a bike and two wheels are traveling down a the road, there's danger. It could get creamed at any time. Yeah, you keep that in the back of your head. You keep that in mind. But you take action. You know what to do. And part of that strategy is silver. Now, one of the things I've really emphasized the most for survival, like old girl here with the axe. <laughs> the axe, the bra, and her undies hanging out from under her freaking dud dungarees uh you know the deal is you got to have the basic tools for survival like old girl her has got the uh you know the wood cutting tool and her ciggy butt in her mouth but the thing is silver has that i have said this before and i can't really emphasize this enough silver's got one attribute that really puts it way ahead of all the other metals it's not the fact that it's divisible like you can go in a store and buy a bunch of canned goods and loaves of bread for an ounce of silver where you can't do that with an ounce of gold unless you really make the gold into, you know, less than a tenth of an ounce or something. The deal is, with silver, it's got medicinal purposes. It's got antimicrobial, antibacterial uses. It can keep water purified indefinitely. You know, nobody's got, most people in this country don't even have an ounce. If you're actually in a situation where we want to stop the spread of disease and want to disinfect the area or boat, if we just have plain water, we don't have any, um, you know, that, we don't have that much in disinfectants and stuff. Well, you know, you can make colloidal silver and wash your floors with it, wash your clothes with it, and uh, fight disease and survive much better for that reason. Everybody would want a couple ounces of silver if we actually had to go down to the basics and you get rid of all these, these stupid antibacterial products out there, that's for sure. Now, the deal is, though, what's coming up? You know, I am not sure, but I'm going to tell you, this is like, um, I could see a couple different things. First off, I've been saying that I think they're not going to do anything till after the election as far as, like, wrecking the economy or allowing the equities to fall. Because the best shot at keeping the incumbent party in office is to keep the economy rolling along very strongly, right? And, uh, you know, how people are, you know, just sitting back in a pool eating a hot dog. Now, this this... This video is going to have a few Confederate pictures in it because I don't give a damn, man. I'm getting tired of this stuff going on with the YT that they're saying, yeah, they don't like you putting Confederate stuff. I'm going to put some goofy Confederate pictures up here with chicks um, in this video because I just figured to break it up a little bit. Um, but I don't consider this chick white trash. She's just joking around. But, you know, this is sort of like the average person in the United States. Um, 
we're not really thinking about what could possibly be happening in the economy like uh you know the banking system collapsing now okay okay you heard that word the banking system collapsing or the phrase right but that's a reality the reason i said this on other videos was that the credit crunch could do it and now what is the credit crunch we've had creditary expansion over three and a half times since the last banking crisis it almost shut down on september 28 2008 for real for real because the money that's actually in circulation is not really in true dollars it's only in the form of credit and if people that are the important players all decide to take their money out and have an electronic bank run because they want to hoard the cash that would cause a systemic failure in the system these aren't words it's not bullshit it really barely it narrowly escaped this happening in September 28 2008 you can ask um, you know people well people I don't want to say the guy's name I know but it, it wasn't the only oh god I almost said his name um, but it's not the only thing it's like Paulson was another one and um, Timmy Geidner was another one I know you, you don't like those people like Hank Paulson and Timmy Geidner but they were being honest that, that almost happened so in the meantime you know the hot dogs are still being cooked and everybody's freaking fed and everything's no problem right uh, and everything seems hunky dory but the problem is we just narrowly escaped that last time this time it could probably happen. I know I've, I've been seeing some videos lately about you know, October or September or something is going to be the crash. Now I've seen videos about February of 2020, 2016 was going to be the big crash. Now one thing that's making me think that possibly something could happen between now and November is that I think they damn well know they lost the deal with Hillary Clinton. Now, I put something out about it. she's got a double. I think that's absolutely fact, but that's not going to work for running the presidency or nothing like that, even if you had a double of her, you know? It's not going to work. Um, another ominous sign for the Clintons is that um, they're laying off dozens of people from the Clinton Foundation. There's a lot of pressure going on. And Soros, the Rockefellers, and, you know, Buffett, I mean, they bet the farm, Warren Buffett, they bet the farm on Hillary Clinton. Actually, some years ago, Warren Buffett and the CEO of Google predicted that Hillary Clinton was going to be the next president. I don't think so. It doesn't look that way. So maybe if they know they lost, they'll, and one of the things that keeps the big machine going, that's the evil machine in the United States, is war. If they know she's not going to get in because she's got... Like, in other words, I saw things where... There's been rallies for Clinton. Nobody showed up. They asked for volunteers. Nobody showed up. She's, like, really unpopular. She's losing her popularity in the millennials, too, because that was one of her strong areas, and the millennials are realizing she's a war hawk. I don't feel like being drafted and killed. Um, so, <laughs> you know, the deal is that maybe she's not, uh, you know, going to be elected no matter how much they tr try to pull the strings behind the scenes, and they know it. So maybe that's a cause for them to do something <clears throat> prior to the election because if a war starts prior to the election, Trump's not going to be able to unravel that. And, you know, the war machine is what keeps the evil going. I mean, maybe that's too simplistic to say that, but basically that's how the, the elite crooks are making the money off the war machine. They cancel out the bad debts. They cause people to freaking uh, lose their money basically sacrifice more during times of war people have actually sacrificed more and more and more now also I want to comment a little bit about um, uh, YouTube and you know this was a chart from MySpace I remember MySpace used to be the big thing way back in the day um, MySpace unique vi visitors remember I was a member of MySpace back in I think in 2008, 9, and 10, and I got rid of it. The longer time everybody else was getting rid of it. You know, if YouTube gets a little stupid with their shit, they, they could find, you know, MySpace was the big the big gorilla in the room, and all of a sudden Facebook now, I don't know, there's a lot of other garbage going on. But, you know, if they get too stupid on this, actually it's going to cause people to leave the, for, the, the venue. It's going to happen. You know, it seems like it can happen. They're too big to fail. Well, not too big to fail. I don't want to use that expression. But it seems like, you know, look what happened with MySpace. It seemed impossible. And they just went off the side of a cliff. I mean, it's still around. But, you know, once people started getting annoyed, that was it, you know. Um, 
I've been, you know, noticing, like, in the last few months, I saw a lot of complaints from people on stuff. Now, I'm not, see, I'm not a guy that actually is a multimedia guy. I'm not a guy that's actually trying to push my channel in all these crazy different ways. I'm not a guy that's trying to push advertising in through blogs and, you know, all this other crap and emails and patronage and PayPal. I don't do that. I just, you know, I'm basically, really, I was, I was an accountant guy that was in uh, a lot of heavy-duty um, areas that, you know, involved far more than what the average accountant did. Um, and I do have some insight on what I'm talking about and a lot of common sense insight on things that even if you know all the fancy $500 words, because I always call them the big bucks bullshit, the common sense goes a long way. Like old girl here with the uh, cigarette, the Confederate flag in the background, and the beer cans in her hair. She knows that those beer can rollers will work just as well as anything you buy in a freaking dollar store. So why waste a good empty can of beer, right? You know, actually, <laughs> that's kind of how... And, you know, the deal is with me. I, I like keeping one foot... I, now I've practically got two feet in the redneck stuff. But um, I've always kept one foot in the redneck stuff. Even though I had to go hang around the people with the phony, phony BMWs and it. Uh, Rolls Royces, even Rolls Royces and shit, Maseratis and all the other bullshit that was out there. But the reality of the situation is that, you know, you know, hardcore things that happen in the economy can't be ignored. You can't paper it over. Um, you know, most people don't really give a damn. Just like old girl here doesn't feel like doing the dishes. She's got a couple of, uh, you notice on her little back stack backside she's got the tramp stamp with the two confederate flags which i thought was pretty neat um now that's a girl straight from my heart and i tell you the truth i've never saw anybody with tramp stamp with two confederate flags but anyway the deal is that people do not uh you know see the writing on the wall or if they see the writing on the wall they keep the, they choose to ignore it because actually most people don't really care about investments because they got nothing to invest they're just surviving Actually, most people don't even have any savings in the United States. Actually, most people are probably upside down in the United States on things, too. Um, and so that's one reason people are not really looking at this stuff, because there ain't nothing they can do about it. They don't care about the end of the world, because they think the end of the world is already here for them. That's what some people are thinking. Now, the way to really build up on that, actually, is through health. And that's why there's a big emphasis on these channels. And health is one thing that can really give you that positive outlook um now it's not easy to be healthy and poor at the same time but you can always grow your own food like old green girl over here is doing with the green thumb and be ecologically friendly versus going into the uh supermarket all the time and buying bags of stuff <laughs> now i'm a supermarket guy but the deal is that you know i usually buy bulk and i buy as much organic stuff as possible and that type of deal but you, the fr your frame of mind is actually one of the best things that you can um, try to change whereby you know your outlook is going to be positive as to what's going to happen in the United States. Yes, um, there's going to be some serious problems coming up. I think there's going to be a major credit crunch. There's also going to be probably a systemic freeze in the banking system, not forever, but a temporary freeze. I don't know if this is going to happen before the election. But if it happens before the election, that means they figure that, you know, the guys that are the guys and the women that most of the guys that are betting all on Hillary Clinton, the big boys that have all the money on her, they figure she's a lost racehorse. The old hag's just going to be put to pasture, and then they just figure they're going to throw in a towel, so they're not going to bother with, you know, trying to keep the economy looking really gro rosy because you know, they know she's going to lose really bad. And she's, like, so far behind right now. That even the major media is starting to admit it in the swing states that Trump is coming on stronger. So they might just pull something before, between now and the election and get us in a war. Because if they get us in a war before the election, it's like Trump's not going to be able to undo it. Now, honestly, I don't trust, don't trust Trump either, okay? I've been around these kind of people. I mean, the guy's probably all right. But, you know, everybody, anybody's got like a lot of money. They're, they're basically BS artists, man. Um, they're all out for number one. They're out for their, they're out for themselves and their families and their inner clique first. If they were really a self-sacrificing, hard-working guy, um, they'd probably be out there as a blue-collar worker, just working very hard and doing their trade well. 
they wouldn't be, you know, like, look at, you know, I mean, Hillary Clinton, you might say, did she ever do anything for the United States? No, she just had the Clinton Foundation. She just accepts by bribes through there. So they did favors for foreign governors through governments through the uh, as through her office as Secretary of State. But on the other hand, what we got Trump. We got a guy that builds golf courses and casinos. Does that make America great? No. <laughs> I mean, really, come on, man. This guy's not. Uh, you know, somebody's developed. Uh, you know, the agricultural industry and stuff. Now. Honestly, there's a lot of rays of hope that can be that are going on in the United States. The problem is that some of the best stuff I put out here on YouTube, I know it's buried. Man, I know it gets buried like crazy. And it's kind of getting me sick because I don't know if it's YouTube doing it or maybe it's just the audience doesn't pick up on it. And it's not necessarily that um, I am doing the wrong thing maybe so much, but it's um, I noticed the biggest things that grab the most attention... In, on the media is the most nonsense going like Polk Man and all this other shit you know when I put out this thing about quantum entanglement and the spooky device that can actually ki- probably take care of the orange tree blight in Florida um, you would think that could be big news but it's 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 non-news and that's probably something to do with you know the algorithms on Google because I think the knowledge that I know is nothing special. They know it, too. In other words, humanity can be uplifted many times over. But today, the game is of the people on the top is they want to keep everybody poor. They want to keep everybody downtrodden. They want to keep everybody hopeless. And they want to, that's a way, a method of control. You know, that's really what the hell the deal is. Um, you know, in a matter, in a matter how hard you work for them, it doesn't matter. They'll want more. That's exactly what it is. No matter how hard you work for them, they will demand more out of you for less money. That's really what's going on. That's really what you could see that goes on in the world with uh, business because they're always like they're not even they're not even going into China anymore. Like they're going into India and Vietnam because they're getting better deals off the labor force. So the reality of the situation is um, never to be cooperative with the elite in, in the least ever. But, um, you know, it's going to come down to a head, I think, at one point in time, whereby um, they're going to find out, they're going to be on a pinnacle of power, but with no basis beneath them. It's almost like what happened to the Roman emperors. They're surrounded by a little clique, but, you know, the little clique around them is ready to stab them in the back at any time. I think that's what's going to happen with the Clintons. Now, for instance, I was, if I was, you know, working with Clintons or something like that, or I was working with Warren Buffett, I'd be looking at them like, hey, you know, I could probably get a lot of gravy out of these assholes. Maybe could take over some of their crap. That's what I'd be thinking of all the time. And see, that's the problem with them, because it's not easy to maintain control, not in the least. That's the whole deal. But you know what the problem is? When you get somebody that loses power, somebody gets into that position... And they're more adept at keeping the power than the ones they that had the power before because they had found a way to finagle them way, their way in it. So, unfortunately, one of the biggest problems we got is, well, I can tell you honestly, the biggest problem we got in this country right now is too much government. And that is really 99% of our entire financial problems, not only from the Federal Reserve, but from the excess spending excess controllers of our lives and everything else um, now on this silver update you might think you know what the hell is this I was kind of beating around on different things but I don't really like putting out charts and graphs and stuff I do think it's very very obvious that the commodities have started their bull run since the beginning of 2016 um, one of the things that bodes bad for the dollar is that interest rates are going to have to climb and interest rates on the 30-year treasuries are going to spell the death of the dollar or not the complete death but basically a diminishing of the dollar's power and where money is likely to go because it can't go more into the equities the equities have been riding high at all-time highs the general equities have been riding on all-time highs for you know years now it's going to basically go into the commodities which is going to cause a rise in the consumer price index 
Because it's not just going to be silver that's going to go up. It's going to be oil, food, copper. Um, actually, I think palladium is going to go up a lot because there's going to be a lot more tensions with Russia. Um, and people are going to wind up having less money to spend because commodities is one of the things that takes is one of your essentials. You know, it's f it's food on the table, it's gas in the car, it's home heating oil, and any essential thing you buy, even if construction, construction in this country actually is 50% of the net, is it, uh, to 50% of the um, economy, whether it's not direct construction, but construction in its correlated industry, industries, which is the real estate market in general, but construction in all its correlated industries is 50% of the U.S. economy. So one of the big things that goes into construction, believe it or not, is uh, is a lot of the commodities, including copper, copper wire, manufacturing copper wire, um, piping. Well, I know sometimes it's PVC, but also any types of raw materials that are used you know, that are commodities go into construction. As a matter of fact, the construction industry in this country sucks. It's been going down, except in a few bright areas where Donald Trump has been invested in. Uh, prime commercial real estate. With commodities going up, construction's even going to go down even further. So, let me say that, you know, things look bad for the U.S. economy. As a matter of fact, i got to tell you this, that, you know, as much as I don't really like Jim Rogers too much, um, you know, the guy that was a partner with Jim Soros in the Quantum Fund for many years, he's basically right that the century that belonged to the USA was the 20th century, the 1900s. The century that's going to belong to mainly to China and Asia is going to be the 21st century, the 2000s and on. And actually, it's just starting right now. If we get involved in a major conflict, um, it's probably going to be the death knell to the United States. And out of the ashes, it's going to rise a much, much, much stronger Asia. And Asia is going to be the controlling influence in the world. China itself. I should also warn you about this. You know, even though I don't sell this product, I already got four generators myself. I got the Spooky Plasma. At one point in time, you might find that made in China product prohibitively expensive to buy due to the exchange rate of the dollar. You know, I'm, do what the hell you want, but I'm not. I'm, I, don't, I don't. You know, I have nothing to do with those people or nothing. But you know, you might want to look at that um, that device I call the you know the Health Rife machine. You might want to look at that seriously before the dollar does its rapid decline because when that happens, um, products made in China are going to be far higher. Now, products made in China like a floor jack or something like that or some tools, or that's one thing. But when you're talking about a one-off one type product like the Spooky Rife Machine, you might, well, do whatever you want. I'm not selling it. This is not a plug for the product. I'm just, everything I say on here about whatever to buy or whatever the hell it is it's something I do personally I always look for the best value for the money and honestly I think silver is the best value for the money right now silver's still depressed palladium has actually gone on it you know it hasn't been doing much lately but uh, since it's low back in late 2008 of like 175 18 150 an ounce um, it's still pretty high but I think it's going to go much, much higher due to the Russian tensions. But I think that eventually silver is going to be the big winner, without a doubt. And it's going to occur when oil prices are very high. As a matter of fact, we are very close to a war in Syria, believe it or not. I know it's been said many times, but this last episode whereby the U.S. government bombed Syrians directly and said it was a mistake when they're trying to freaking um, help out some other. I don't even want to mention a word because YouTube gets all bent out of shape even if you mention a word because it's quite obvious the U.S. government's behind it. As a matter of fact, I do know that uh, the CIA funds uh, people through Google. There's no doubt about that. I know this for a fact. I don't want. To, I shouldn't even say that, but you might think I'm full of shit on that. But I know it. I know it for a fact. Okay. I know it for a fact. Um, and not through the internet. So let me just tell you that you know it's 
the internet is not really you know it's another thing I was even talking about before the inter a lot of people say the internet we got the internet we got them on the run actually they're trying to really put the squinch whatever you want to put it squinch down the internet if that's the right word by you know squeezing people that are independent voices and they're doing it in a lot of different ways now they probably won't squeeze me because I really uh, I'm not really doing this like for the same reasons a lot of other people are you know I can um, it's not I'm not I'm not like a multimedia guy that's the thing I'm not really a multimedia guy at all um, I'm actually an account and finance guy and I know a lot of you know hands-on redneck stuff but it's like mainly I'm an accountant finance guy I'm a, I have a background in a, an accounting degree with 30 credits a secondary major in higher mathematics with 30 credits in it I've been in, in a higher end accountant since the 70s I'm not a CPA but I don't want to be a CPA because I think somehow that shit makes me want to puke I don't like the IRS <laughs> that's why I want to be a CPA because basically when you're a CPA all you do is taxes and I just somehow I don't like that shit I like construction and accounting mainly, or manufacturing accounting, stuff that does real stuff, that makes stuff. Um, but let me just state that people, uh, you know, that are in, you are, that are YouTube producers, a lot of times, they're in there looking for what the audience wants. I don't necessarily do that. And I don't necessarily play the games with, you know, the you know special things that push videos. I'm actually giving you the freaking flat out truth, far more than a lot of other people. Um, but you know you gotta you gotta keep things in common sense perspective. It's like people that get just cause to worry about stuff, but you don't want to be overly worried about it, and you don't want to be worried about it all the time. That's why I don't put out doom and gloom videos all the time, and and even the doom and gloom videos I put out are more. I, you know I don't want to describe them as that. You know some people have accused me of that, but I don't want to describe them as that. They're basically um, something that is alerting you to the reality of the situation. But it's just like anything. I mean, when I compare it to riding a motorcycle down the road, every time you get on a motorcycle, it's two wheels. You're going to be in danger. You you have you're you know you're in a sea of metal of four wheel cars that probably ain't looking where they're going. You're taking a risk. You got to see what the risk is. You got to act accordingly. You got to keep your eyes open. It doesn't mean you're going to be like a a, a frozen fear monger. I can't move. You got to react to the situation. It's just like riding a motorcycle through traffic. That's exactly what I want to compare to, you know, my methods of telling you what's going on. Yeah, the reality of the situation is to watch out. You know, act accordingly. But it doesn't mean you got to be like, Ooh, you know. <laughs> and you can always make do, just like old girl here with the curlers. She uses her beer, empty beer cans, and she doesn't have to go buy curlers in the dollar store. She's got to save herself. I don't know how many beer cans are up there. One, two, three, four, five, six. She saved herself six bucks. And just empty freaking cans of cores or whatever else she's got up there. So anyway, um, you know, most people like, you know, there's too broke to even give a shit anyway. That's one thing. And number two, if you're too, actually number two, if you're too broke to give a shit about anything, you ought to be planting tomatoes or some shit. I'm telling you right now. Um, the people are just too lazy to get out there and play the green thumb thing. And, you know, me being New Jersey, I was kind of laid on it. got my little lemon trees out there going on there. But, uh, you know, I get into a lot of different things. And I'm telling you right now that silver is not the full answer to all your problems. I know the people on the silver channels make, want to make it sound that way, that you're going to get filthy rich off of some freaking silver, and everybody's going to want it. And the fact that you got these silver coins, it's going to be like one coin is going to be worth like a gazillion dollars. That's bullshit. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's bullshit. Actually, probably uh, you know, a freaking garbage can full of apples are probably worth more than freaking silver if you're hungry. Um, so it's you know, I don't want to paint that kind of picture, but I think silver is going to do extremely well. And the one thing that, like I said, it's got the ace with that metal, the real ace with that metal, is the medicinal purposes. No doubt about it. It's amazing. You know, most people, I'd say 99% of the people easily in the United States don't know that silver could be used as an, a more effective antimicrobial than any product sold in the supermarkets or on eBay or in Amazon stores or Google stores than anything out there that will work better as an antimicrobial than any product sold. Silver, colloidal silver, ionic silver, you know, combination thereof, which you can make with a few simple 9-volt batteries. 
and a couple of silver rods that just stole water. They don't know that. Because, you know why? They weren't conditioned by freaking umpteen hours of advertising and bull crap on the boob tube, boob tube and whatever the hell else is out there. You know? Uh, but maybe, you know, I guess, you know, really it's going to come to come down to the power is going to go to the knowledgeable. And by knowledge, it means doesn't mean formal um, training in college. It, it means the knowledgeable that know how to really get along like like in a real world. That's the, that's the situation. Um, and you got to have the skills to survive, just like old kid on here on a skateboard. Um, he's, he's riding while they're walking. So um, that's basically all i got to say on this deal, because the deal is that silver is something that you can't rely on as your be-all, end-all, freaking solution, everything. And at the same time, it's going to be an investment that's going to do very well. But, uh, you know, one reason I would never give up all silver is just the antimicrobial, antibacterial, medicinal purposes behind it, which another th thing about it is that it helps the body create its own stem cells. A lot of people don't know that. Ionic silver helps the body create stem cells. I mean, people knew this stuff. I mean, everybody in the whole freaking country, everybody in the world would want an ounce of silver at least. And there's definitely not enough to go around. Just for the health benefits. And, and that goes to show you, like, why, um, you know, the silver preachers are failing, or whatever the hell is in charge of this silver community, which is not me. The other thing is, um, that would work very well to push the product would be Argentium silver, which never tarnishes this type of uh, s sterling silver that is not made with copper. It never tarnishes, even in seawater. It's got a luster better than white gold, but at a much lower price. Oh, that would freaking push it out there, too. You know, and everybody would love that type of jewelry. But the problem is, you know, the people that are running the deal with the, you know, the silver, whatever the hell you want to call them, the silver pushers, they, are, they ignore these type of things. It's amazing. I'm not in charge of this deal, I'll tell you the truth. I'm just sitting back and I'm waiting for, you know, whenever it goes up, I'm, pra I'm probably, like I said, I'm going to dump the palladium first, at least some of it, by land up in uh, the Tennessee Smoky Mountains in Blue Ridge Mountains of Tennessee. And, uh, you know, keep the rest of the palladium, of course. And then uh, sit on the silver, the gold, and the platinum and, you know, wait for them to go up much higher. In the meantime, you know, I might be up there in one when the big kablooey happens. I don't think it's going to happen right away, but I think we have a pretty good forecast that it's going to start freaking unraveling in 2017. Um, I'm very hesitant about saying that stuff's going to unravel very, very soon. Um, it's a possibility because, like I said, people that are in control, they're not in control. They don't know exactly what's going on. There's no doubt about that. People that are in control never really have everything rigidly planned. That's one of the things that kind of irks me about the uh, people that put out videos about, you know, the elite do this, the elite do that. Yeah, I know the elite do this and that. But they never have everything under absolute control. They move like um, lightning. They take the path of least resistance. They're always looking for the money, where the money is. The money's somewhere like a little bit different in a little bit different direction. Yeah, they can't change direction that much, but they can change direction. That's really what it is. You know, if there's an opportunity that arises, they'll strike. That's exactly what the deal is. So, you know, there's nothing 100% originally planned, even by the people on the top. Although, the, the people out on the top, they never sleep. They're, you know, I mean, they sleep literally, but I mean, they never, their ambitions never drop. They never let down their guard, and they never, um, you know, just kick back and, and just and try to freaking sit on their investments and, and ride it out. They're always trying to go forward and always trying to get more. Because if they don't have that attitude, somebody else will get into their position and knock them out of the position, and then it'll just keep going from there. And then those people will be the ones that will be the elite. Um, but the biggest problem we got today where we have an insurmountable problem for the average people is that the elite control the U.S. government. And the elite even control the state governments and even to the lesser elite control the county governments. That's 99% of the problem that we have for the American people. And um, until that is remedied, 
through a maybe a systemic financial collapse, which I think that's what's going to really remedy the situation. It's going to be a rebirth of the American way of life. Tell you the truth, it's not going to be something. It's going to be hardship, but it's actually going to cause the American way, the American people, to be reborn. And when that happens, the people that had all their pensions and retirements in, you know, Congress, Congress people, and whatever the hell is congressmen and senators from I mean, the government of the United States on a federal level, or senators and congressmen on a state level, and county commissioners on the county levels, they're going to wind up having all their retirement gone because of a systemic financial collapse in the United States, which is going to be great in a lot of ways because it's going to put the hammer mainly to them versus us, we the people. As long as we the people can survive with basic necessities and make our, and make and grow our basic necessities, we don't need them. We don't need the government. And reality situation is any kind of government that's tied to money is illegitimate. No doubt about it. So, um, the revolution is coming one way or the other. Maybe it's not going to be the armed revolution, but it could be that too. I don't know. But the revolution is coming one way or the other because the economy is going to force it that way. There's no doubt about it. So, uh, just let me tell you that, you know, time is on our side and time is short for the people on the top and they know it. They know it. They're running scared. Um, it's like they don't play like they're running scared. They always put on the front they're not running scared, but they are running scared, no doubt about it. So the revolution actually is an underlying quiet revolution that is coming about due to the economy and the dollar failing because it's based upon the dollar itself is based upon credit. Our economy is based upon credit, and credit is based upon phony inflated asset prices which really aren't there it's coming down no doubt about it 